brother, sister, so and so has passed away. Has passed away. And when you say that to somebody here in these United States of America, they know exactly what that means. That means somebody has died. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this once again. If, if any man be, therefore if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation. A new creature altogether. The old previous moral con spiritual condition has passed away. In other words, has died. Behold, the fresh and new has come. And what is that symbolic of? That's symbolic of being born again. Because in order for you to be born again, you got to first die. You, what are you dying to? You're dying to self. You're dying to sin. That old spiritual moral condition as identified here in, Matt, in the Second Corinthians 5.17, that's what you're dying to. So, that, so what? So that you can take on the new nature, the new man, which is of Christ. The old and the new, it cannot coexist together, y'all. We done talked about that. Light and dark has no part together, neither does old and new. The Bible says that you cannot put new wine in old wineskin. Why? The wineskin will burst. It will destroy itself. God came to give you life and life more abundantly. He didn't come to destroy you and I. He come to, re he come to revive us. Well... <laughs> <laughs> well, more or less revived. Yeah. He came to give us a new life. We were dead, y'all. We were dead. When you were trespassers in your sin, you and I, we were dead people walking. Oh, yeah. Because the Bible does say this. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. From thus you came, from thus you will return. But Minister Weathersby, I'm breathing. I'm living. I'm, I'm, I'm moving about. Yeah, in this life. But when this life is over, you're dead already. Because from here, and you live in a life that is not in the will of God. I'm in the message. I really am in the message, y'all. It's just God has, has a way. This is what God does. He has a way of doing this for us. When you allow, and this is the way I this is the way I conduct myself with God in the Word. I had somebody on the other day try to try to challenge me about the fact that they say I'm not preaching the word. They said I was preaching Arthur. I'm preaching myself. I don't do that. I don't do that. God would allow us to use antidotes or anything like that to set up a background, to give a background for what's to come, but I don't preach that stuff. I'm preaching the word. This is called expository preaching. That's going scripture by scripture, opening and allowing the Holy Ghost to open up the scriptures to you, and then the Holy Ghost will give you corresponding scriptures. Because if anybody can see, all I'm doing right here is holding my Bible. And as, as I'm going through one thing, the Holy Ghost is telling me to go somewhere else. And that's what I'm doing. We're going to John 1.1. 1, 1. I'm going to explain something here about when Jesus speaks, just listen. And the reason why we need to do that. It reads this way. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God Himself. He was present originally with God. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Because I really just needed that first verse. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God and the Word was God Himself. Now, Christ, the Word, that's Jesus Christ. And so, therefore, when I'm saying, when Jesus speaks, just listen, guess what? He's speaking to you and I now. Anytime the Word of God is read into your and my hearing, Jesus Christ is speaking. He is the living Word. And when Jesus speaks, just listen. Lord, have mercy. Oh, my God, I can shout right there. I don't know about y'all, but I can shout right there. Hell, oh, my God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here we go, verse 26, verse 16, 26. For what will profit a man if he gain the whole world and forfeits his life, his blessed life in the kingdom of God? Or what would a man give us in exchange for his blessed life in the kingdom of God? Too many people are chasing after the things of the world. They're trying to gain uh, 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 the, the, the riches of the world, the prosperity of the world, the accolades of the world. Those things that, that bring us worldly satisfaction. But those things are temporal. They're here today and they're gone tomorrow. So what will you do to get that? 
and lose your life. We ain't talking about your natural life because I've already defined there's a time to be born, there's a time to die. That's a given. But that eternal life, you can forfeit your eternal life with Christ to life with eternal damnation. If you go after the things of the world, Lord have mercy. For the Son of Man is, is, go, is going to come in the, in the glory, majesty, splendor of his Father with his angels. And then he will render account, oh my God, and reward every man according to what he has done. Watch this, y'all. Let's go to Matthew 25. When Jesus Christ, oh my God, oh my God. When Jesus is speaking, just listen. I'm telling you, the word of God, oh, I'm, oh my God, I got to calm down. I got to calm down. Lord have mercy. The, I'm excited y'all by the word of God. Not by what I'm doing, but by the word of God. When God opens up his scriptures to you, when he speaks to you from the depths of who he is, right while you're reading it. Lord have mercy. Let's go to Matthew, the 25th chapter. I'm going to read that 27th verse and 16 to you. But I'm going to Matthew, the 25th chapter, and show you how the word of God works, y'all. Some people need to understand. That's why you got to get in your Bible. You got to study to show yourself to prove unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. Now, I want you to, I'm going to read verse 27 again. From the 16th chapter of Matthew. Then I'm going to Matthew, the 25th chapter. And I'm going to pick it up at that 35th ver uh, the uh, 31st verse. 31st verse. I want you to pay attention. Here we go. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory, majesty, splendor of his Father. With his angels. And then he will render account and reward every man in accordance with what he has done. Matthew 25 verse 31. When a son of man comes in his glory, his majesty and splendor, and all the holy angels with him, hallelujah, right there, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them, the people from one another. As a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats, he will cause the sheep to stand at his right hand, but the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at the right hand, listen, y'all, come, you blessed of my father. Let's go back to verse 27. When he comes in the glory, majesty, spirit of his father with his angels, then he will render account and reward every man in accordance with what he has done. Stick a pen in that. Come, you blessed of my father, you favored of God and appointed to eternal salvation. Inherit, receive as your own the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's the reward for those that are on the right side of God. That's the, those who are on the, on the right standing of God that are righteous in his sight. And here's what, here's what it takes for you to get there. Because too many people don't understand what it takes to get there uh, to that place called heaven. Watch this. Verse 35. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. And you brought me together with yourselves. And welcomed and entertained and lodged me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. With help and ministering care. I was in prison and you came to see me. Then. The just and upright will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome and entertained you or naked and clothed you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and came to visit you? And the king will reply to them, truly, I tell you, in so far as you did it for one of the least in the estimation of men. Of these, my brethren, you did it for me. That's the reward for the righteous. And the Bible says in, in, in Matthew uh, 16, 27, he will render account and reward every man in accordance with what he has done. Now he's going to reward them other guys on the left-hand side. Then he will say to those at his left hand, mm -hmm, be gone from me. You curse it into 
the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. Lord, I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me and entertain me. I was naked, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison. You did not visit me with help and ministry and care. Then they also, in their turn, will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? He did not minister to you. And he will reply to them, Solemnly I declare to you, it pains my heart to say this, Solemnly, I declare to you, insofar as you failed to do it, for the least in the estimation of men of these, you failed to do it for me. Then they will go away into eternal punishment. That's the ones on the left hand. But those who are just in upright and in right standing with God into eternal life. So what will it gain a man, the prophet? The things of this world and lose his eternal life. Lord have mercy. Truly, I, verse 28, y'all, of Matthew 16. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. That's the rapture. Now we're in verse, now we're in chapter 17, verse 1. And six days after this. Now, don't it all make sense now? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and his, his brother and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Now, it's, it's, it's important to understand uh, he did this with, he had 12 disciples, but he took these three. These were known as his inner circle, y'all. Uh, Peter, you've already met. James and John, they're known as the sons of Zebedee. Their father was Zebedee. They were fishermen. When Jesus called them into discipleship, uh, he saw them on the seashore as where they were fishing, where they were, where they were, you know, doing their, their vocation. They were in their boat, mending their nets with their father, Zebedee. Jesus came up alongside of their boat and says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They were fishermen, but Jesus says, follow me and I'm going to make you fishers of men. The Bible says straightway. They left their boat with their father in there. Uh, that's where separation, what Jesus Christ said, he came to provide, to bring division into the world. There were going to be some with him and some against him. He didn't tell, now understand this, oh my God, this is by way of the Holy Ghost right here, thank you Holy Ghost. When Jesus said, follow me, I will make you fishers of men, there were three men in that boat. Lord, help us. There were three men in that boat. There was James, John, and their father, Zebedee. Two left the boat. James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Zebedee stayed behind. The Bible says, Jesus says, I came to bring division into the world. There will be father against son. That's the division. Two sided with Jesus. One stayed behind. One did the father did not want to be fisher of men. He wanted to be a fisherman. The, the, the younger ones, they, they chose to follow Jesus. Lord have mercy. That was an illumination right there. Thank you, God. Lord have mercy. Verse 2. And is oh yeah. James and John. John is known as that disciple whom Jesus loved. John was a disciple. That when Jesus Christ was being crucified, and at the foot of the cross was his mother Mary, weeping, boohooing, uh, grieving over her son. Because when she was looking up at that cross and looked at her son, she could not recognize him. They, Y'all, we do not understand what they did to our Lord and Savior. They beat him unrecognizably by his own mother. They used some, some methods back in the day. They would have whips. And put nails at the end of it. So when they flung the whip into the flesh of somebody. It stuck into their skin. And then they would pull it back. Or hooks. And they would pull it back. I think it might have been hooks. 
and they would pull it back from them. And guess when they pulled when they pulled back, guess what came on that hook? Flesh. Flesh.